Good morning. I'll be honest with you, as I came out of the meditation room this morning, I still had no idea for sure what I was going to be talking about. <laughs> it's one of those mornings when I really didn't even want to get out of bed. I stayed in bed for a good while longer than I usually stay in bed. And I spent less time in the meditation room than I than I do. Well, actually, there's some mornings that I don't go to the meditation room. Some mornings I go to the atrium. And there have been a few mornings where I actually do most of my meditation still laying in my bed <laughs> and just pondering without without getting my feet on the floor and walking down the hall. <laughs> so anyway, today was one of those mornings that uh, I guess because I did not get a nap yesterday and I went across the state of Florida and, and gave a little bit of a talk and led a discussion uh, on the constitutional uh, questions uh, brought up in the Supreme Court ruling from June the 16th. By the way, that was just an amazing time. And my friend uh, Cara from Vero Beach actually drove me, so I, I didn't even have to drive myself, I just had to drive myself the hour from Melbourne to to Vero Beach. And so it was a beautiful day, but a very long day. I did not get a nap, uh, and I did not get much sleep the night before. So therefore, uh, today I sort of wanted to make up for it, <laughs> I guess. Anyway, when I came to the computer, uh, I saw a response that I had uh, to my answers to the questions that uh, Michael had raised uh, yesterday that I responded to when I got home last night before I went to bed. And he had asked me two questions. And anyway, today's topic is called Ninth Wave Dogmatic Religions and Unity Consciousness. And I wrote, one of my friends wanted clarification. He asked, is the Ninth Wave a dogma? And is Ron Van Dyke a man or the consciousness of the man or behind the man? I don't have, I have of the man written, but he said, might have said behind the man. I answered no and both. He wants me to elaborate, so I will. So I decided this morning when I saw his response where he sent me the definition of the word dogma from the dictionary. And then he wanted to know why I'm separating the Son of Man from the Son of God in the person of Jesus Christ. So those were his, uh, his two things this morning that I, that I read, and I thought, well, that's what I'm supposed to talk about today. It gave me the clarity that I needed to come up with today's topic. Anyway, I don't disagree with his definitions at all but I don't think the definitions are complete, nor do they convey what I mean when I talk about dogmatic religions. First of all, let me say that religion to me has an underlying principle behind it. And the underlying principle, and I'm defining it from my own experience, and that's the only way that I can define things because I know that there are other definitions and they're not, the other definitions are not necessarily wrong, but they, again, do not convey what I understand from having experienced the things that I've experienced in my lifetime this time around. I see religion as standing on the foundation of separation, especially Western religions. The idea that God is something out there and we are something over here that is separate from that which is out there. And that our whole world is one of this being separate from that and defining things narrowly and exclusively. It is a mindset. It is an, an attitude of separation. And that is a consciousness a consciousness of separation or of division. Now when someone in that consciousness 
of religion and separation and limitation. When someone in that consciousness is trying to convince someone else that they have to believe a certain thing in order to be correct. They're coming from a place of ego based on a false premise. Actually, it's an impossible premise. It's an premise, it's a premise that the illusion of separation is real. And the only way to become whole is to believe a certain creed or doctrine, a dogma, which Michael says is, or shows me, is a doctrine or a corpus of doctrines relating to matters such as morality and faith set forth in an authoritative manner. In an authoritative principle, belief, or statement of of ideas or opinion, especially one considered to be absolutely true. See synonyms at doctrine. A belief, or number three, a principle or belief or a group of them. There's nothing wrong with that definition. Except, let me, let me go back to what Jesus did. When Jesus was encountering the scribes and the Pharisees of his day. There's this comment that I remember from the Bible. They noticed that he did not speak as the scribes and Pharisees, but as one having authority. Okay, the scribes and the Pharisees didn't know it on an intimate, personal level. They only knew it on an intellectual level. That's religion. That's the difference between religion and spirituality. You only know it in your head. It hasn't made the trip from here to the heart. And now I'm sure, just having looked at the image of myself pointing to my head, that, that's, that the people at um, YouTube are going to choose that image of me touching my head as the image for today's video, which I hope they don't because I don't like those things most of the time. They don't, they're not appealing to me. And I know I took an aside there, but that's part of my humanity coming through. But anyway, when somebody's trying to convince me that they're right and I'm wrong, there's going to be a natural resistance that comes up. And it's because I resist someone that is still speaking from a place of ignorance with, authoritative, with an authoritative voice. I used to speak with that voice. When I was a fundamentalist Christian and I was trying to convince others that Jesus was the only way, that you had to believe in Jesus, and by believing in Jesus I meant you had to believe in Jesus like I believe in Jesus. You had to subscribe to my narrow viewpoint and interpretation of things. And I had some success in convincing people that my way was right. I can still look back on my life of people that I led to the Lord and I helped them get saved. I helped convince them of a truth that I believed was true. As I have evolved in my consciousness, I may still speak in an authoritative manner like Jesus did, but I'm speaking from a different platform. I don't care whether you believe anything or not. I'm sharing with you perceptions of reality based on the difference between separation consciousness and unity consciousness. A dogmatic religion is one that is still operating under separation consciousness. That something can be separate from anything else, that there is no whole, wholeness in creation. That there is no wholeness even in God. The Christians, for example, that look at the world and what they see first, 
not what they see as the primary essence. They don't see God as the primary essence. They do not. And this is the problem with dogmatic religions. They see the devil as having preeminence over God. And so they're always pointing out the evil first. As if the evil is the essence. And the evil is an illusion. It's an illusion. It's not the essence of anything. We are not basically bad. And I don't care how many scriptures you want to throw that man was born in sin and shaped in iniquity. I know the scriptures. But man was not created bad. God saw the creation and it was very good. And then man started thinking good and evil. Actually, man started thinking evil because man asked for his inheritance and wanted to be separate from God, wanted God to die. So he started working from a false foundation, a foundation that he was actually separate, that the illusion he had created in his mind was actually true. But it can't be true. It's impossible for it to be true. Absolutely impossible. Do you understand that God, if God is God, as we understand God being the, the force behind all of life, the, cre the prime creator, and in fact, the end of all things, the beginning and the end, the alpha and the omega, if that's what we define God as, God is not separate, nor can God be separate from anything and any idea or, di or dogma or doctrine that's put forth to indicate separation is based on a false principle. And that's, what, that's how the scribes and the Pharisees talked. That's why there was a distinction made in the ministry of Jesus, that he doesn't talk like the scribes and the Pharisees. He speaks with authority. Why? Because he's speaking from a place of unity consciousness, where everything is one, and it's a given. It's a given. It's not something that even needs to be proved. Yet it needs to be proved what to people, it seems to need to be proved to people that don't get the idea that separation is a lie. And you can't even talk to people that believe separation is a lie from a place of unity consciousness because they don't see it yet. They don't understand it yet. And so it still comes across to them as a doctrine. Why? Because their filter through which they're seeing is the filter through which they always see, the filter of separation. So they don't get it. And when you're looking at your, the eye, you're looking through your eyes at the world and all you see is separation, all you see is, the, is how strong the devil is, how strong the wicked one is, how strong the antichrist is, how strong all the negativity is. If that's all you're looking at, you can't comprehend that there's something beautiful behind all that you're seeing that puts it all together and weaves it into a tapestry of beauty and love and truth and something greater, something far more powerful, something far more real, because you're still seeing the unreality as real. And so it's really difficult for me or anyone else to, to convey to you that we don't care. It doesn't matter what you believe. Truth is truth behind it all, and truth is separation is a lie. It is an illusion created by the manifestation of energy or spirit in physicality, where one object appears separate from another object. But that is not the reality behind the perception. The perception is a limited perception. It is only part of the truth. And as far as me being a man or consciousness, when I become one, when I, the man, become conscious of the consciousness of me, the eternal being, as Jesus did in the person of Jesus Christ, we become one. There's no more separation. That's why I answered both. And I hope I'm helping you to understand, Michael, and anyone else that has these questions of, of what I'm meaning when I talk about these. It doesn't matter. You can still hang on to your limited viewpoint if you want to still believe in separation. Believe in it. It's okay. It's okay. That's where you are in the evolution of consciousness. And love is inclusive. It can embrace that. 
But when you're operating from the premise of a, do of a religious doctrine of separation, you see the person that doesn't agree with you as lost and going to hell and in danger of, of all sorts of things because of how you're perceiving reality, how you're perceiving life. And when you're perceiving life that way, it's just simply not wholeness. And, and I, don't, I'm, I can't convince you of that because people can only see it when they see it. I couldn't see it when I was a young Christian. I couldn't see it. I still was in my limited consciousness. But now that I see all of it coming together, I explain it totally differently. And can I explain it perfectly? Not to someone that still thinks the old way. That's the message of the ninth wave because it's unity consciousness. Is it a dogma? Absolutely not. It's a wave. It's simply a wave that enables us to awaken to higher truth. I went over again, and I hope I've made some sense. Namaste.